First of all, which one is correct, Lang or Lang? Um, both, really. Both? Both, you know. Obviously in German, uh, it's Lang. And, but I've been living in English speaking countries longer than in <laughs> German speaking countries. So by now it's Lang. So it's, it's both good. Uh, but usually, usually people, I think, more internationally know me as Thomas Lang. Yeah. How do you like more? Uh, I, don't, I don't care. It's, it's all the same to me. Yeah, I've, I, got, I got used to Lang, so I think, you know, it's, it's now Lang. It, it both work for me. <laughs> okay. uh, you have phenomenal legs technique. Uh, your legs play in much better than many of these drummers' hands. And uh, how do you do this? I mean, what uh, teaches, what books or videos uh, became a foundation of uh, your legs right. magic? Yeah. Well, my secret is that my, inside of my shoes, I have another pair of hands, actually. They're not feet, they're a second pair of hands, no. But um, I practiced, when I started playing uh, double kick drums, uh, which happened by chance, really, um, I didn't have any double bass drum books, so I just used snare drum books. Because I thought, if it works for my hands, it's probably gonna work for my feet, too. So I started very early to experiment and practice uh, rudiments with my feet and uh, and I think that made all the difference to be able to play you know completely freely any kind of combinations of, of singles and doubles with the feet um, and if you can only play singles you're basically eliminating 50 percent of what you can potentially play so I concentrated uh, on doubles and combinations of singles of dub and doubles very early on, and I think over the years that made the biggest difference. In your videos, you play uh, heel up, heel down. Uh, you use both of them. I use, yes, I use all uh, existing sort of bass drum techniques. I use heel up stomping techniques, both flat footed and with the ball of my foot. And I use heel down strokes and I use ankle strokes. So, and also for a few years, I used heel toe technique. So um, I use all techniques, just like you was, use different techniques with your hands. You know, for some things you use only fingers. For some things you use, for textural stuff, you use only like two fingers. And for other things you use your wrist or forearm. So you have to mix and combine all these different techniques to get different sounds and to play dynamically. And it's the same with the feet. In order to play dynamically, you have to combine techniques. You can't just play everything using heel up. You know, it doesn't work that way. And it makes it, it's a lot easier to adjust your technique to play dynamically and to produce certain sounds or to play fast uh, or play fast, uh, quiet or loud. You know, you, you have to switch techniques, otherwise it doesn't work. And how much does uh, the settings of your pedals depends on uh, your playing? Zero. Zero? Zero. Yes, I you know I'm not a, a gear or pedal uh, you know manic. I am not paranoid about settings, and I don't have a like a pedal phobia. I like I take the pedal out of the box when it comes from drum workshop and I play it. That's it. I, yeah. I never adjust anything, and I don't think about it. To me, uh, you know, foot control is about the foot. It's not about the pedal. It's all about the foot. I want to be able to play on any kind of pedal no matter what the setting is, just like I want to be able to play with any kind of stick, not just my special signature stick, you know what I mean? I want to be able to pick up any pair of sticks and play. And it's the same with the pedals. I worry more about my foot, and if the pedal doesn't feel right in the first moment, I adjust my technique so it feels better, you know? So I, I don't worry about pedal settings at all. Never. Never have, and I hopefully never will, because I play different pedals every day, almost. So. I also don't have the time to worry about pedal settings, you know, it would be too, too much of a hassle to start adjusting pedals every day, you know. <laughs> okay, one of the biggest troubles in drama's life is uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. As you have successfully passed through it, uh, I can't restrain to ask. Uh, yes. um, what is the main reason of uh, appearance of this ill and uh, how do we can uh, is prevent it, prevent it yeah. and uh, what to do if you have already got it? Okay, well that's a very good question and important questions. Um, in my case, you know, 
any activity that in, in, involves gripping and vibration at the same time can cause carpal tunnel or make it worse. Like riding motorcycles. If you ride motorcycles a lot or uh, if you are driving trucks that vi vibrate or any kind of building machines or whatever it is. And of course drumming is the same thing. We grip the stick and we hit things and the stick vibrates. So that aggravates it and there's nothing you can do about it. If you have a genetic predisposition to carpal tunnel, mm -hmm. of course drumming will bring it on and make it worse. Um, and it can also happen if you don't have a genetic predisposition to it. So just playing drums for many, many years with, this, with a, quite a hard grip for loud music can bring it on. And once you have it, uh, for a number of years when I already had the problem, I just got injections, steroid injections and, and cortisone injections just to make it easier to continue to work. But it didn't solve the problem, of course. So in my experience, the, the best thing you can do if you have it is to get a surgery and the surgery is 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 easy and uh, rehabilitation everything is fairly quick so and there's different procedures you can do you can do the you know uh, endoscopic surgery where they just make a very small keyhole and and then they send a little you know blade in there they don't have to cut you open but the that version is not uh, doesn't guarantee long-term success. Mm -hmm. It may be, it may help help you for a number of years, but then it may the carpal tunnel may grow back together. So I wanted the surgery where they slice a big chunk of the carpal tunnel out, so it can never grow back together. And it worked for me. It was perfect. It was. If you have the problem, I I would say uh, don't don't delay serious. Uh, measures don't don't wait for too long um get surgery you know if if you can afford it or if it's possible and then after surgery very important is of course hand therapy if you can get it just making doing the right exercises i had hand therapy for every day for 30 days afterwards so that made a big difference and um and you know it's i am still doing this hand as well because i still have it on this hand this one is i had surgery but and I'm very much looking forward to getting it done because it is an annoying. It's a hassle. Um, it's not the end of your career. You know, it's not a. You know, it's not that much of a problem. It's a. You know, it can cause you know extreme discomfort, and it's it's always a worry. So for me, the the best thing to do was to just get surgery and, and never think about it again. You know. Okay, um, I read an article uh, where you said that you're not uh, you doesn't play uh, traditional grip anymore. Is it true? Yeah, well, I, I do play still, but I try not to. Mm -hmm. So I try to play everything match grip. Why? Uh, because I, I needed a challenge. <laughs> you know, I wanted to m mix up my playing, I wanted to change things. And the most fundamental thing you can change is your grip in drumming. So with changing my grip, I changed my setup and the angles and the reach and uh, a lot of the style you know, and stylistic things that I play and the styles of music I play. I just wanted, you know, a fresh breeze and new influence in my playing. And I switched, you know, everything around. I wanted to change everything. And I changed my, my drums, my drum companies, and uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, create a new challenge for myself. And also, although I'm a big fan of traditional grip, um, it is not a very natural grip. If you give a drumstick to a monkey, he's not going to hold it like this. So I wanted a grip that requires less maintenance. Because, you know, when you're a working touring musician and you travel a lot and you work a lot, um, then you need something that is always reliable and requires zero maintenance and zero effort. So that's not traditional grip. Traditional grip requires constant, you know, supervision and constant babysitting and constant uh, warming up and uh, maintenance so I wanted to after so many years of playing just like this I just had enough of it and I wanted to do something easier and something that's that requires less worry and and uh, and attention uh, what is a secret of successful practicing uh, to have a good plan mm -hmm. to have a good practice plan I read that you uh, practice only two hours a day. Is it true? Mm, I know I practiced more, but less than other people. I practice probably an average, probably four hours a day on average for many, many years. So, um, 
And in addition to that, I did a lot of playing and recording and rehearsing and gigging and so on. So I didn't count that as practicing. So the four hours I did were strict practice time and or maybe three, three to four hours, something like that per day. Um, and if you if you have a good plan, practice plan, then you always know what you have to practice. You always know why you're practicing those things. Uh, you, if you stick to the most basic practice rules, your session will be perfect every time. You know, and you know, I'm, I'm sure you may know the saying that perfect practice makes perfect, and that's true. You know, if you if you waste time practicing, uh, if you get you know mentally drift off, if you get distracted easily, or if you don't stick with an exercise, or if you don't practice the correct exercises, or if you don't practice them and push yourself constantly. Um, then you're, the, the impact and, and the results are just not as satisfying, you know. So I think the most important thing is to have a plan and to stick to it when you practice. Okay, here are some questions from our audience. Uh, okay. I'll read them. And first of them is from our Janis Smolis. Okay. Uh, you, bo you both play V drums and acoustic drums. That's why this question for you. Okay. What is better, electronic or acoustic drums? Uh, this is the wrong question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I can tell you, if you ask uh, Chick Corea or Herbie Hancock or Joe Zavinol, if you ask them that same question, what's better, a synthesizer or an acoustic piano? All would say, why? Of course, both. You know, no, there is no either or. There is always, you have to have both, no question. There's. It's, it shouldn't be a decision between two different things. It's all one instrument and electronic drums are part of playing drums, just like a synthesizer is part of playing keyboards or, or being a pianist or um, a keyboard player. You know, you have to be able to play everything. You have to know how to play and how to modify and how to program acoustic drums. You have to be able to tune uh, acoustic drums and modify electronic drums. So for me, that never was an issue. I never thought about it as two different instruments. It's one instrument. It's just, you know, you have cymbals. It's like saying what's better, splash cymbals or chinas. It depends on what you want, what you use. They're all cymbals, just like drums are all drums, electronic or acoustic, but it depends on what you want to use them for. And since today a lot of music, probably most, 90% you know, percent of all music is produced with electronic sounds, with synthesizers, with sequencers, um, you have to be able to recreate those sounds authentically, not just simulate them, but you have to actually have those exact same sounds. You know, if you have an 808 bass drum, you can't simulate that with an acoustic bass drum. So you have to have that sound. And in order to reproduce these sounds, you need the equipment. So for me, the answer is both, not either or, but definitely both. And if you can play hybrid kits, you know, combinations of both, or have two different sets for different playing situations. If you can afford it, get both. And for practicing, if you're a young drummer and you have, you're practicing in an apartment or you, know, you don't have a separate rehearsal room, electronic drums are fantastic because you don't have to soundproof a room. Uh, they're quiet. You can work with headphones and have fantastic drum sounds. You don't have to tune them and get new drum heads you know, every couple of months. Um, they're already perfectly in tune and it's a lot more inspiring to play a great sounding electronic kit than to play a, you know, a not well tuned acoustic kit. You don't have anger you know, or issues with your neighbors. Um, you don't need to be in a soundproof room. Um, your parents can just close the door and say put the headphones on and turn it down and you can still practice any time of day or night. So they have a lot of benefits for young musicians especially. So uh, in his case I would probably recommend you know some electronic drums to start and to practice and to invest as much time learning as possible without getting kicked out of the apartment you know <laughs> okay and uh, what should we always remember to be in excellent uh, playing form um i think to to be in excellent playing form it's is you have to sort of mentally be ready for it you know have fun and don't overthink things, don't get paranoid about things, don't worry too much about equipment and gear and this and that. I think the most important thing is to, to be in, in sort of a playing mood, you know, to, to think about the music first and to think about the creativity and the creative aspect of playing 
more than about techniques and stuff like that. I think that's that's to just have a you know being the right frame of mind for making music, which is an artistic thing. It's not just a sport, you know, sporty athletic thing. It's very much artistic and creative. So, you know, to be in your best playing shape or playing form, I think you have to be completely open and creative, you know. That's all. Thank you a lot. Igor, my pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure.